Ian Ferguson. This is a man we want to talk to because ARM is hot, ARM is sexy, ARM is the future. Uh, Ian, have a seat uh, inside the cube here. Hi. I'm John Furrier of Silicon Angle. Ian, nice to meet you. And uh, Dave Vellante. Dave Vellante. From Hi, Wikibon. nice to meet you. Pleasure. Um, ARM may be hot and sexy. I don't know whether I am, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, <laughs> I was going to say something. Cool and sexy. Um, Face built for radio. You look good. You look good. All right. So um, we are here at HP. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com with my hub co-host Dave Vellante. We are here for special coverage of HP's announcement of Project Loonshot, a multi-year initiative around new servers, new low energy, multi-year, multi-program, great for LAMP stack, uh, portable code, not bound to CPU. It's all about power, mobile architecture, moving to the servers at scale. ARM is a big part of it. So, Ian, tell us one. Why is ARM so hot? I mean, Steve Jobs chose it for the iPad over Intel. It was a shoe in for <laughs> Intel, he said uh, in his biography. Um, now you got ARM going to the servers. What's the big deal? I mean, why is everyone so uh, you know into this ARM stuff? Share with the folks. I don't know how many people we've got on watching right now, but uh, 2,400. 2,400 people ARM. watching. So they all want to know what ARM architecture is. Obviously, it's a deviation from x86. The old old way is Intel. The new way is ARM. <laughs> If you got a mobile phone, you know what low power can do for your battery life. What does well, it do for servers? Well, you're too kind. And, uh, um, yeah, I think, you know, we've spent 21 years uh, designing technology that is incredibly miserly when it comes to um, leaking power. Um, so we look at um, what you can do on your phone inside a particular number of watts or even in joules. And I think what's changed is that, that energy-constrained systems is no, just, no longer just the battery. Um, if you look at a data center and it's 10 megawatts, instead of um, how much performance am I getting, it's a how, how much can I get out of my 10 megawatts. So it's a slightly different energy-constrained system compared to your iPad or your phone, but it's still an energy-constrained system. And as Paul mentioned earlier in the, in the uh, announcement, um, these in these data centers, the server is the profit generator. So it's not really useful work you can get out. It's like how many dollars can I get out of my data center in a 10 megawatt power envelope? And we've been doing that for 21 years. So we're looking to apply that energy efficiency knowledge into a new space. So obviously you're dealing with multiple variables now when you look at this new architecture. Um, in a way, it's an operating system within the operating system. Can you share the, the, the new things that you guys have done, the things that you've done and the new things that are happening today that folks might not know about that's going on in this space? Okay. Um, well, I, I think, like we said, we're at the early stages. Um, you know, this has been worked on for a few years with pioneers and thought leaders like HP. Um, we, we have this little legacy, 20 years of x86 code in some spaces to, t uh, to go on. But, um, you know, in the cloud, there's a lot of open source. Um, there are end users that own their own software stacks. And so there's lower software barriers to entry uh, for another architecture. And, um, you know, what we've done is we've been working to get good Java. Um, you know, a lot of these new um, workloads take good advantage of Java or Perl scripts and things like that. So less ties to x86. Um, we need good commercial-grade server Linux, and we've been working with people like Ubuntu. Um, you'll see in the Pathfinder program that Red Hat is also listed in HP's partners. So we're sort of trying to get those underpinnings of the basic operating system and tools. Um, but really what we, is exciting about this announcement today is we need real hardware out in the cloud that people can go have at and see how do the current... Uh, workloads run on ARM, and then how do you take that technology, maybe optimize it for a new architecture, and through this Redstone platform, putting that out into the cloud, people can go and run workloads on this technology and see, does it give a meaningful benefit? Yes or no? And in some workloads, x86 is absolutely the right way. In other, in other ways, we hope that people will see a benefit from the ARM architecture. Talk about the early adopters in terms of the developers that are out there. I see a new breed of developers are on the marketplace. You're seeing you know, like you said, people using non-compiled oriented software to do stuff, and it's cloud, and there's also the networking issues. So converged infrastructure makes a difference. We heard from HP talk about that. But what can you share with the folks out there that you've heard or seen or know about this new type of developer? And what can they do with, with ARM? You know, what are some of the use cases and, and innovative things that a developer can think now about that they couldn't think about before? Yeah, good question. So um, certainly we keep hearing the word of you know, offline analytics and Hadoop and, and that, kind of, that kind of workload, um, the sort of 
the cloud eras of this world, um, people looking at unstructured databases, um, web serving, web hosting types of applications where instead of needing a lot of CPU performance, it's relatively modest CPU compute and then a lot of I.O. and memory. Um, so we see those areas as, as the first place for, for ARM. Um, we announced the 64-bit instruction set last week, um, and we certainly see over time that the ARM architecture is moving in a place where it will become more broadly applicable to uh, a, a broader set of uh, server applications. Um, we see it starting to fit into enterprise as you get to 64-bit, and there's more performance and there's more address space for those sorts of applications. Uh, but near term, it's certainly the cloud, and, and like I say, offline analytics, web serving, that kind of thing. How about in the mobile environment? Obviously, it's been a big boon to the mobile environment, having that kind of architecture for devices, but now on a connected end-to-end -end basis, the, the, the proverbial end-to-end -end, uh, architecture. How does that look? Well, I, I think certainly looking, uh, it's interesting, and conceptually and intellectually it looks like it sh we should be able to do something there uh, and we've certainly been talking to some network operators and we hope they're the sort of some of the people that might try this this hardware um we've got to, whether yes people are going to offload from this from the, the phone and put stuff back up into the cloud run the binary in different places um it sounds good um I, I think it will come. I, I think there's some lower as, hanging fruit. Sounds good as code for it's not there yet. <laughs> I, th I think that's a fair way of <laughs> fair way of putting it. Yeah, I, I, and, I, and I think until you know, I'm not a fan of stay in the PowerPoint world. And, and we've been in yeah, PowerPoint yeah. saying, oh, this stuff looks good. Really, if we come back to the announcement today, there's hardware there that people can start to play with in now, you know in the coming in future today, and say, sense. does this work? in that workload that you're describing. Uh, intellectually, it sounds like it should, but let's go see whether it gives a meaningful benefit. Big data and web-based apps, key app for this, right out of the box. Yep. So in terms of, uh, uh, Ian, your role here, mm. is in terms of delivering low-power processors for server markets, for data centers, yeah. where do you leave off and where do others pick up? Can you describe that point a little bit? Yeah, Give I'll, I'll certainly try. Um, so, you know, ARM's business model is really different uh, from your traditional s supplier into Talk about into that, the yeah. server market, we do not make chips. Um, we license intellectual property, which could be a processor core or a graphics core, uh, or the intelligence that a foundry uses to make that chip really fast or really low power or somewhere in the middle. So we really need an ecosystem to get, to get our technology from where we are today into a market space, into any market, um, whether that's Samsung into the Galaxy tablets, whether it's, uh, you know, the Broadcoms or Marvels or TIs to take technology into phones, or whether it's Calzada, um, and we were an early investor in Calzada because we needed somebody that was a thought leader to go and take a silicon chip and take it into this space. So we're certainly involved with that. Uh, we believe in uh, design once, license many. Uh, we believe the space needs multiple suppliers to keep everyone honest on on pricing uh, to drive innovation in the space. You've seen the benefits of multiple people going into the smartphone area, mm -hmm. people putting other clever things around the CPU core. Um, so, so that's the first thing. The second thing is software. And you know, clearly we're at the early stage, and that's why we're excited about being in the Pathfinder program where we're going to help people with tools, with es expertise on how to optimize their applications for the ARM architecture because it's, it's a new world. Everyone knows x86 very well in the programming world of, of the servers. ARM is new. How do you take advantage of our SIMD instructions? It's kind of a new thing, um, and, and we'll be looking to add that sort of value into the, uh, into the center when it opens next year. Hmm. So um, I have a question on, on the big whale in the in the room, right? Which is which is Intel, right? I mean, they're a huge company. You're they about are what, big. half a billion dollar company, and revenue wise, Intel's forty four billion, about eighty eight times your revenue. They've got, you got three hundred million in cash. They got twenty two billion, about seventy three times more. Yet the market only values Intel about ten x. You guys, you know, what does that tell you? And uh, and and how do you how, how how do you guys think about competing with the big whale? Be faster, obviously. We love innovation. We love startups. But share with us a little uh, little insight there. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're, um, we're massively bigger than you said. We're actually eight hundred million dollars instead ah, of half okay. a billion. Um, <laughs> um, Run rate. <laughs> there you go. Um, we are um, yeah, good. Good. Um, 
Yeah, it's really, you know, the, the CPU for us it, and into these systems is an important piece of the system, but it's not the whole thing. And if you look at how servers will be reworked, um, what we're trying to do is empower innovation outside the CPU. And we're going to see heterogeneous environments where people like NVIDIA come in and say, we're doing interesting stuff with our GP GPUs, we can blend it with ARM. Um, they were announced as one of the architecture license of 64-bit last week. Um, you see what Calzade is doing and saying, we're going to take the core mechanics of the ARM core and put interesting server management and things like that around the core. Diversity is key um, and we're going to see a broad range of silicon chips coming out and so it's not the little just the little ARM fish or plankton or whatever we are in that in that whale analogy um, you know it, it's it's us it's Samsung it's Nvidia it's all of this broad ecosystem pond, yeah. well I, there's there's a lot of people and, and and really it's not a you know my process of pipeline is better than yours is that at an SOC level with the integration level that Calzade is doing and with other things that other partners that I can't disclose are doing around the core, you're going to see a diversity of devices. And is Intel the right thing for some server applications in the future? Absolutely. Are they right for everything? Absolutely not. And, and you'll see that diversity in choice, which I think the market will benefit from. Mm, great. All right, Ian Ferguson, ARM. You, you guys are uh, the darling right now, great products, uh, technology. HP's uh, integrating you guys in uh, via your partner. Thanks for coming inside the cube. Appreciate it's, it. It's an honor to be in front of uh, these gentlemen's <laughs> it really offices. Is, uh, <laughs> it, it's magical. The last time I got this close to HP is when I got uh, rejected on a job in 1988. So uh, <laughs> it's it's great to come and finally make it back to the headquarters. And uh, yeah, I appreciate yeah. your time and yeah. I appreciate your interest in arm. Thank you very uh, thank much. You. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.